Uh, we are joined by uh, Mr. Samir Abbas, he's Egyptologist. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. And first of all, let me ask you, who is Queen Cleopatra? First of all, thanks for inviting me to talk about this subject today. So this subject, we are covering that in, in a big topic, which is the ruling queens of ancient Egypt. And today is the last episode which is we ending. That's a grand finale with Cleopatra, one of the most famous names who ruled Egypt. So uh, the interesting thing about Cleopatra's story is that we are dealing with different interesting topics and debates as well. If she was beautiful or ugly, uh, if, she, if she's an Egyptian or Greek, so if she was in love with Mark Antony and Julius Caesar or she had a different type of love, political love, which is for their power and to stay in power, if she committed suicide or uh, she was killed by Octavian, uh, if, her, if she is buried in Alexandria or in the catacomb or the royal cemetery or in Tab Osiris. You know, that's a, still a debating, have any exact a, source. A, a, a debating subject. That's still all debating subjects. So uh, let's tell some facts about Cleopatra first. And uh, she ruled Egypt around 50 BC. She was only 18 or 19 years old. She ruled for 20 years and she died of the age of 39, or could suicide or killed at the age of 30, 39. Uh, she married from four, from four men. So uh, two of them, they are brothers, uh, younger brothers, like 10 years younger than her. And that was quite common within the Ptolemy family in that time. And the other two, they are Roman army generals, which is from a Roman perspective, you know, they consider her the reason of the destruction of the Roman generals of, uh, like, put an end for the Roman generals, Mark Antony and Julius Caesar. Another thing which is about Cleopatra as well, that she was ruling as, she was the last queen to rule Egypt from a dynasty called the Ptolemy dynasty, which has come from Ptolemy I, which is descent from, from Alexander army. The most pacified is from Macedonian Greek blood. So in, in history, it doesn't seem that she is an Egyptian because she comes from the bloodline of the Greek kings. And the Greeks ruled Egypt starting from Alexander, which is he invaded Egypt in the fourth century BC. And after his death, the Egypt became inherited by Ptolemy, which is an army general working for Alexander. And then it became the ruled Egypt for 300 years till Cleopatra. Yes, so uh, tell us what about the historian who wrote about Cleopatra's life. So one of the very interesting facts about yes. Cleopatra, uh, Shireen's uh, mm. story is that uh, we know her mainly from, uh, from stories written by her enemies. Mm. She wasn't a favor for the Roman Empire at all. And the Roman Empire, that was the most powerful empire in that time. So uh, she was doing her best in order to stay in power and not only not only to stay in power in Egypt, but also to take control of Rome as well. And that, that's why she was considered a threat for the Roman Empire. She managed to attract the attention of Julius Caesar, which is in his time, he was the most powerful army general for the Roman Empire. And when he was assassinated in the famous instance, the famous one in Rome, she managed to attract the attention of uh, Mark Antony. And he was in that time the most a powerful army general as well and uh, that's make her the enemy of Rome because every time she established a connection with one of these generals it happened that they changed their minds it mm. happened that they come back with different plans Rome in that time it was a democratic uh, it was the early of democracy in the ancient world but because the, as you mentioned that we don't have an exact source of anything about her and um, maybe many of the people they believe that for example the movie the famous movie of Cleopatra mm -hmm. maybe um, all what they have seen in the movie this is the real life and this what happened uh, mm -hmm. in the life of Cleopatra as well and uh, as a matter of fact the movie which has made her very famous that's we that's there is no debate about that uh, this movie is one of the biggest production in Hollywood and I think that the producer, they bankrupt after the movie. The movie never to be a good source of uh, like historical information because the movie producer normally tend to throw a very interesting facts or very interesting, not facts, I mean very interesting uh, stories to make this movie selling very well. So the movie is based on a real story and this her relationship with uh, Mark Antony and Julius Caesar and the love and uh, 
and uh, Egypt and the uh, struggle between Egypt and Rome at that time. But of course, he threw in between lots of interesting stories. So, for example, that one of the things which is, I, uh, I disagree with the movie, that the movie was focusing on the kind of love uh, love relationship between as you mentioned the movie is trying to use something to attract exactly. viewers and, yes. and like love and beauty and sex and all that is a very attractive when I come when I come to the movie so why you ask the uh, life chosen uh, by uh, Hollywood filmmakers to document her life not any other Egyptian queen that's a very good question actually mm. uh, Shireen and uh, uh, Kilobatra's story had a very interesting mix between power struggle a woman in rule and love mm -hmm. and there is a very few stories in in the history which is have all that together and beauty as well so Kili Butter, she was one of the very smartest women which has ruled Egypt here and um, apart she's coming from a Greek background she lived in Alexandria Alexandria was the capital in that time she was educated in the most important learning or uh, or, or, or university in that time, which is the ancient library of Alexandria, known as a museum. So she was able to master about six or seven different languages. Mm. And she was, she was also very well educated in different science mm. fields and philosophy, astronomy, um, math, and many other things as well. So a woman like that will really impress. Every, any man will deal with her, and that was her strength point. Her strength point that is uh, she knew that the powerful men around the world, they already, which is like Julius Caesar, Mark Antony, that they can get, they can easily get any woman he wants, any beautiful woman he wants. But for a, for a woman with a, with a smart mind, with a woman with that intelligence, it wasn't common in the ancient world in that time to have such women. And that's, that, was, that was her main advantages in the relationship between Julius Caesar and, uh, with Julius Caesar and with Mark Antony as well. Do you know anything about the era that she ruled in Egypt? Sorry? The, the, the era that she ruled? The era, yes, you know, definitely. You know, so the era, so uh, the, the Ptolemy ruled Egypt, which is, as I mentioned earlier, that it started around the 4th century BC, and it ended by here, actually, 4th century BC. Uh, 300 years is classified, can be divided into two sections. So the beginning, that was a powerful rule of the King Ptolemy's first, the second, the third, and the fourth, and then after that, it started declining. So King Butter, she tried to pick this power again, because that was that was the rise of the Roman Empire. So um, the Ro Roman Empire was a guardian for the Ptolemy rule here in Egypt. When the Ptolemy rule became weak, and Cleopatra, she found herself she can able to restore her family power and Egypt power, bring that to and to she a managed high level to as well. do this. She's almost, you know. Unfortunately, she didn't live long enough to have this plan succeed. She had a very interesting plan, by the plan, by the way. So Cleopatra. She, she knew that her access to the power would be through Julius Caesar. And that's why she managed to convince Julius Caesar that she is the right choice to rule Egypt. In that time, she was already married to her brother, which is Ptolemy the 13, yes, Ptolemy the 13, and which is 10 years younger than her. That was more like political marriage arranged with the parents before the father's death. So, but in the process as well, which is because of her great ambitions, which is didn't like or appreciated by her brother, she was exiled from Egypt during the time when Julius Caesar visited Egypt. And because of her support to Cleopatra, that started a war between Julius Caesar and the jealous brother, which is a husband as well, which is ended in the favor of Julius Caesar and Cleopatra and the death of the brother. Then Julius Caesar, he arranged a marriage. According to the custom, she married from the other brother, which is younger as well. And after that, they celebrated together the honeymoon. But the honeymoon that was Kiribati taking Julius Caesar in a trip for three months in a Nile cruise from Alexandria all the way to Aswan. So he was brainwashed during this trip. When he made it back to Rome, first of all, Kiribati was pregnant and, and the son was the son of Julius Caesar. When he made it back to Rome, he was asking for more power. And he took actually her, you know, with, with her son as well back to Rome as well. And he erected a statue for her a uh, golden statue in the temple of Venus or Venice in Rome. And that was a very big uh, impact in the Roman culture. They became terrified from Cleopatra as well because Julius Caesar, he was trying and he was almost changed the Roman rules and regulations to legalize her, his second marriage from a foreign lady, which is Cleopatra, and to acknowledge their son, which is Caesarian, as a legitimate son, which is mean that he will be the ruler of Rome and Egypt. That was her plan. 
I think that is and why he was killed they, for that. By the way, he was killed for that. That is why they, uh, she was considered one of the important figures for Hollywood. To and she, she never gave up, you know, when he, when he, uh, when he assassinated, she fled to Egypt with her son. And um, then, which is the real civil war started after the, uh, sorry, after the assassination of Julius Caesar. And the result was that Octavian and Mark Antony, the, they became the rulers of the Roman Empire. One responsible of the Eastern part, which is Mark Antony, and the other one responsible Octavian of the Western part. She managed to attract uh, Mark Antony. She sailed to him in a boat covered in gold sheets with purple sails with oars covered in silver, silver sheets. And uh, it was a big scene and uh, she used her magic, you know. She considered Isis, she, she, she considered herself as a living representation of Isis, the ancient Egyptian goddess. And Isis was a goddess of magic. And, you know, and that's, that was the Italian said, that's what the Roman said. So they said that this lady, she used her magic against our leaders. And that's explained why Octavian, he refused to meet her or have a confrontation with her, he was worried from her. Even in her weakest points, when he defeated, when Octavian defeated her and Mark Antony, he refused to meet her because he was worried that she will practice her magic on him like it did, like happens with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony before. And he ordered her, uh, she committed suicide as a result, and it's still a big mystery how she committed suicide by an asp or by a poison or she might be killed as Roman C said that she committed suicide. It's still a mystery as well if she committed suicide because of the loss of her of her husband and lover, which is Mark Anthony, and the father of three kids she has from Mark Anthony. Yes. And or or she committed a couple of months after when she realized that she cannot be in power anymore and she will take him in Barrera in the streets of Rome. But, and that would be completely different than the way she was introduced to Rome during Julius Caesar. She committed suicide and her history has been wiped out after that uh, by Octavian and even her kids. So the eldest one, which is that was the heir to the throne, Caesarian, fled to Egypt to India. And he was attracted by Octavian and he killed him because he is the heir to the throne. The other three kids has been buried in the streets of Rome as a triumph of victory of Octavian. And uh, then they have been adapted by Octavia, which is, uh, which is the sister of Octavian at that time. So it was a very big drama and had lots of details, which is even worse having an, another movie. So finally, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Sure. Mir Abbas, uh, Egyptologist. Thank you for being with us. You're